Mr. Kessler. What's going on, guys? Mr. Castle here, and welcome to Tower of God Episode 5 Review, The Crown's Fate. So, I don't know about you guys, but this show, in its short time it's been on Crunchyroll, has been growing on me quite a bit. And it's just overall style of the anime, its music, and just the huge mysteries that lie ahead that we just don't know anything about. Shout out to those that you use Crunchyroll. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but maybe one day. <laughs> Anyways, there is just so much we don't know unless you have been keeping up to date with the webtoon, which from my knowledge is kind of a new style of storytelling they have been doing different from your traditional manga. I read a couple chapters and I noticed there's uh, many similarities with the current anime and its animation, but I also realized there's slight deviations they have taken from the story compared to the webtoon, which they have changed in the anime a little bit, but I could save that for another video another time. As of right now, the first season of the webtoon has 76 episodes, the second season with 337 episodes, and currently into season 3 with 59 episodes. I'm pretty pumped because from the research I've done thus far in terms of so many other animes being delayed for or postponed for obvious reasons, this anime currently is not being affected by those obvious reasons, so plan on seeing more episodes in the future. Now let's get into the actual episode itself for those of you that need a recap of episode 4 and how that ended called the Green April. It leaves our protagonists Kun, Bam, and Rack entering the arena for the crown game with several other teams entering the fold to battle it out as well. Episode 5 starts off with Kun revealing a lot actually in this episode which I don't know if anyone could have really predicted or saw coming but he reveals he literally has a bag of magic tricks <laughs> I am not kidding when I say that we come to find his little suitcase bag looking thing he carries around with him can do a multitude of things like copy whatever he puts into it including the crown they have to steal to win the game as far as we know right now, we only know that he can copy inanimate objects that he puts into it, which explains a lot to where he gets all the freaking candy bars that he consistently gives Rack. But I'm starting to like Kuhn even more because he's got that I don't care facade about him and he's actually proving that he's very skilled and very intelligent as far as we know. They get to his backstory a little bit back in episode 3 called The Correct Door where it flashes back to a great betrayal involving, I'm pretty sure, mainly his family and his half sister which I think they were lovers question mark I'm not really sure about that whole thing but it says his family name is Aguero I think I'm pronouncing that correctly it also talks about many rumors revolving around his past that he had to suffer and endure from but not a huge amount of information on Kun at the moment besides his sister was apparently supposed to be a princess of Jihad it doesn't necessarily allude to this fact of her actually becoming a princess of Jihad, but it does say he helped her get selected for the role of Jihad, but he and his whole family of the Agueros got exiled for his actions, or at least was used and betrayed for his love of his sister. I don't really know at this point, but more will be revealed. There is a lot to speculate here on his backstory, but does confirm that a princess of Jihad must be chosen instead of just being mere blood relative, or it could be just a mere blood relative. We don't know that for sure, but it does let us know about Princess Yuri of Jihad could potentially be born of blood or she was chosen for the role, but we just don't know with the information we have thus far. But let's get back to the crown game where we got my man Kun. He's just like laughing at the competition, tosses a crown in the pile of enemies, and sits on the throne while they all duke it out, which in my opinion is kind of smart to just let everyone else go crazy and then eventually tire out and then destroy the competition later. Kun reveals he indeed has the crown and puts the crown on Ban, which everyone gets pretty pissed off at this. And they start charging the throne where Rack, the big gator, does what he does best by taking out the competition with his infamous toss. I don't know why he does this, but every time he does anything involving tossing or throwing something, he says toss. I find it quite amusing, by the way. Also, Rack, if you didn't know, is the same voice actor as All Might in My Hero Academia and Mohamed Advil in jo JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which I think is so that's amazing. I knew this guy sounded familiar, but in case you want to look up his name, his name is Kenta Miyaki. Don't say you didn't learn anything from this video, <laughs> or maybe you were the all-knowing anime god before you clicked on this video. Also, we got Kinjiro Tsuda, who plays Leo Ro, who is the ranker and the examiner of the second floor, and you might recognize him from My Hero Academia. Thought that guy sounded familiar. 
but we come to find he's already been at the top of the tower which makes me very curious if the legends are true to receiving whatever it is that you want if you make it to the top so why is it that he chose to basically just be a mere examiner like i don't get it there must be some benefit but you know here's an example all i've wanted to do is be a teacher which some people that's fine if that's your lifelong dream but you would think if most people made it to the top and they would make it so they would never have to work again be all powerful you know the typical wishes many of us would make if we got the opportunity like this but i'm sure more will be revealed anyways about leo ro in this anime his voice in this anime is just music to my ears i just love it what he's able to do with this ca uh, character with his voice and it just adds so much depth in my opinion to this character lastly again we have another jojo's voice actor Daisuka Ono, who plays Jotaro, and he plays Fonseca Lori, who is that wave controller dude that's always wrapped up in a sleeping bag or blanket. <laughs> I don't really know what that, if that's like a, a meme over in Japan or like a funny character type. I noticed uh, that Aizawa in My Hero Academia is like that, so I don't, I don't know where they're going with that, like with the slothful type of character that just always wraps himself up but anyways Fonseca Lore ends up facing off against Anak who is a princess of Jihad which we come to find in the last episode and I looked at her backstory and it seems pretty interesting what's going to happen later on I don't really know all the details but more reveal will definitely be revealed as the show goes on but I do have to say when she gets angry she is very scary <laughs> Moving on to the next part, so as we said earlier, Bam and friends make it to the fourth round after Rack easily destroys the competition. By the way, another fun fact about Kun's bag is that it can also hold people inside of it. Like how much can one magic bag of tricks do? It is revealed in this round that during the second floor of the tower, Kun found some interesting people to carry in his let's call it copy bag to hold on to until he needed them as a favor so they could pass the second floor test without fear of being killed. But the time of need is here, and Kun decides to take the three individuals who we know nothing about out of his bag to help him and his team with the fourth round now. Nothing is really explained about these three, but they all look to have some pretty unique abilities, and I'm curious to see if we will run into these guys later in the story. I'm sure we will. The three people he chooses end up fighting for him and just makes Kun look like an absolute genius. But to how easy they defeated all the teams, I was kind of confused why he chose to use them on that specific round instead of saving them for the last round. But then again, he probably had no idea if he'd even survive round four. So it was probably a good call. But then again, he didn't know what he was waiting for in round four either. But also, we don't know his full capabilities yet. So anyways, that was one thing I thought in the episode I thought was kind of out of place. But leave your thoughts about it down below in the comments. So round four again goes to Bam and the gang with Kun stealing the show with the very minimal work he's put in thus far. Now we got the last round, which we have had a couple funny moments until this point with Bam, Rack, and Kun, which I really like the three together as a team just because of how different they all are in so many different ways, especially personality-wise. Like, you got the mindless brute who's Rack, then you have the intelligent brains of Kun, and then you have Bam who's just an inexperienced, naive kid just doing what he thinks is right. So episode four and this episode really had me on the edge of my seat this last round. Not only did they have some strong enemy teams show up, but the three cloaked figures that came from another testing arena that was introduced in the last episode that came to Inviken Hell, I think I said that correctly, testing zone, which is where they all are at currently. At the end of episode four, they tease Rachel being one of the three cloaked figures, which Bam pretty much alludes to in the end of episode four, which kind of surprised me that we're already being shown her this early on. I wasn't sure if this was going to be one of those stories where the protagonist fights like tooth and nail for like three seasons before we even get a hint of his character's long lost counterpart. But so far, I like the anime and is basically not wasting any time getting into the the story at all by the way i really like this concept of there being multiple testing arenas because it just expands the universe greatly of this anime because all we knew from the first episode is rachel and bam and they were in like some dark like cave or like some world we don't even know it just looked like a big cave to me i don't know what you guys thought about it but the possibilities for this anime and the potential and just from the webtoon i've seen it are going to be pretty vast Back to the tower where the fifth round starts, we have the rest of the teams come out, including Rachel and the other two cloaked figures. 
things start getting really spicy during the round because the girl in the full body tights starts popping off and knocking everyone out on the other teams. This chick's all over the place, man. Like, I'm really curious to what her origin story is. I want to talk about uh, Kun and Rack a little bit because you really get to figure out, like, what their capabilities in this whole round are. Like, you see the lady in full body tights. She fights Rack before she gets to the throne, and she hits him in the face, which, you know, hurts him a little bit. But it just kind of lets you know this guy is a beast. Like, this gator can take a lot of damage. Um... And then you got Kuhn, who basically is copying all these knives. And, you know, he's a really good reminder of how bloody this anime can get. He's just throwing knives all over the place. And he has a good duel with this guy in this ponytail, but makes quick work of him. I thought it was hilarious um, before the, you know, the lady in tights gets to the throne when uh, you got Rack fighting that little guy. They're, like, having a fist fight. He's like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Like, I just thought that was hilarious. Like, <laughs> he just beats the crap out of this guy. <laughs> but anyways, not going to lie, I find it awfully odd that the cloaked figures are helping Bam and the gang out so easily, but there seems to be some grand plan to be revealed, uh, question mark. Especially, what's up with Rachel just ignoring poor Bam like that? Like, he keeps saying, are you Rachel? Are you Rachel? And he's basically giving his soul to her, which she hasn't been giving him the time of day, and she just up and leaves him. But I know there's probably some big plot line that's going to come. But when worse comes to worse, towards the end of uh, the episode, Bam, the ma'am, after seeing Rachel get hurt by the lady in full body tights, he tries to protect her, and he gets his head busted pretty bad, which surprised me quite a bit to just see how much freaking blood poured out of his head. Once this happened, we find out which we all had our suspicions about Bam, that he was super powerful because everyone that has thus far met Bam has treated him with interest, even though he is portrayed as super weak. In Bam's explosion of anger, he shoots a ginormous sensu blast at the ceiling, which almost looks like he charged something on the ceiling because the lights turn on after the sensu hits it. I don't know what that was all about. But this puts everyone in awe, and the lady in tights finally stopped, and we come to find she has red hair. And uh, we get to see a little bit of her face later on in the episode, but she gets... I don't know if we still want to see her face after she gets blasted. <laughs> I found it very interesting when Leo Rowe, after this whole uh, crown game, was talking to the test administrator, which it seemed that there was some conspiracy theories going on, which which still, I don't, there's a lot I don't understand. Like, I looked a decent amount of things up when, before making this video. A lot of names like they use Quant and Evankill are actual people. The way they portrayed it in the anime made me think that it might be something else. I had to rewatch the episode to get a better understanding. And I know the testing area they in, or from what I found, is the second floor still, even though they've done several tests there so far, which I haven't been able to find any parts of the episode where it actually mentions the text director's name. But I looked it up, and it's Yu Han Sung. He always has that look of knowing something you don't. But when Leo Ro has this conversation with him, he feels that something else might be going on with the director's intention to why they brought... Uh, those three cloaked figures to the test. I don't know. There's a lot when I say a lot. There's a lot to be revealed about these people being mentioned, like Quant, Evankel, which most of the, I think they're rankers from what I've uh, come to find. And uh, Evankel is like a fire ranker who is an ancient, like super ancient or something like that. And she's an old ruler of the second floor. That's as far as what I've looked up, I was able to find. But that's pretty much my review of episode 5. There's just so much that actually happened in this episode that points to so many things in this anime. It's almost overwhelming on how much information there is in this anime. And going, it's going to bring a lot to the table in terms of story. But I'm super excited to find out more and share it with you guys. It's going to be a journey covering this anime. And I just want to mention there is an, even a wiki for this show. And I'll leave a link down in the description for you which i find that absolutely bonkers by the way that they have a wiki for it but if you guys enjoyed this long video be sure to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell to see our next video when it will be out i hope you guys enjoyed stay safe